Nope. 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 Not you. You only get bit. one life to live. Be selfish as fuck. Are you ready? Uh, welcome back. Welcome. 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 Welcome back to another episode of KFC Radio. It just gave me a, a fix my audio alert. I think because of my voice is so beautiful. It was like, we can't even imagine hearing such a siren say, well, um. <laughs> this is just the whole episode. It's just me not finished. I'm just, just, I'm just edging you, just edging you saying, welcome back to KFC radio presented by, but I'm not letting you finish. I'm not, I'm not getting there quite yet. I'm just doing a welcome. I'm just doing a welcome. I'm just doing a welcome back to another edition of KFC Radio on the bar. By by Sports Network. Barcelona Sports Network. <laughs> Make sure to subscribe to the YouTube. Uh, leave a five-star review, fucking upvote it, do all this stuff that we require of you as a viewer because we like to give chores to people who come to listen to us for enjoyment. All right, I'm doing the ads again today. Uh, first one's going to be from Roman, but before we get to this ad, everyone tweet Kevin that he's very nice. No, 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 no. Well, everyone tweet Kevin you love. Him. Let's just do something basic like that. Everyone say, KFC Barstool, I love you. KFC Barstool, you are the sweetest boy in the whole world. KFC Barstool, I want to make love to you, but only if you use Roman Swipes, okay? Roman Swipes is us living in the future. You are, you are, you are bad at sex. Let's just call it what it is. If you're listening to this podcast, you are definitively bad at sex because everyone alive is bad at sex. How do you get better at sex? You go to getroman.com slash KFC. They can make you last longer because you can stop because of the swipes that, that you're going to buy five bucks monthly plan, choose a monthly plan. You get them for five bucks. It's a no brainer. It's PT, not PTSD. Uh, definitely not PTSD. What's the word I'm looking for? Performance enhancing drugs to PED, get your PEDs for sex, last longer, make your girlfriend, make your boyfriend, whatever it is. I don't give a shit. Make your girlfriend, make your boyfriend come because you need to not come in order for them to come. You need to last longer. Get Roman.com slash KFC five bucks. Get your swipes. So uh, Kevin is away, so we're doing uh, – I'm doing One Minute Man real quick right now. Boom. How about this? One Minute Man. First of all, Matt Stafford, he's drunk at the Super Bowl. Makes me very anxious. I have not watched the video. I do not like people uh, filming me when they're drunk. I do not people, like people taking advantage of drunk people, which is what's happening on the internet right now. Much like uh, when 50 was fat shamed, the internet is coming together to share videos of Matt Stafford being drunk, which I have not watched because I it makes me it makes me uncomfortable. I don't know why. I think that if you are drunk, you should be allowed to be drunk privately. That is that is between you and God. It is not between you and fucking everyone else on the Internet. Um, that's not me being a downer. It's not me saying Matt Stafford shouldn't be drunk or anything like that. Of course not. Be drunk all the time. That's my advice. But uh, just just I don't know. I, I, I don't I don't love those videos like everyone loves. It makes me uncomfortable. Second one minute man situation, because that was definitely a minute. Um, genius. Kind of documentary. <laughs> Genius is, it is almost impossible to take someone who is as interesting as Kanye West and make Genius as boring as it is. I masturbated twice trying to watch Genius. <laughs> just, just got so bored. I was like, all right, I'm going to put on porn or something fucking interesting, something that can make me feel something. The entire hour and a half of Genius I couldn't even tell you what it's about. It's just, it's just Kanye walking in streets. That's it. it it's, it's, it's crazy. There is a little bit towards the end where he, 
He goes home and Donda's on it, which is a little bit interesting to see a look into their relationship. But the rest of it is, it's crazy. He's an incredibly interesting person. How do you make him so boring? Well, I don't know. It doesn't make any sense to me. It is. It's just fucking an hour and a half of footage from the 90s of Kanye, like, driving in cars. It is. And honestly, I, I tip my cap to them. I tip my cap to to uh, Cootie, I believe is his name, the uh, writer of the documentary and the filmer and all that, because that's what a documentary is. Boring. I'm glad we're getting back to the days of documentaries being respected and being understood as that they're supposed to be boring. Because we've been doing these produced documentaries that aren't real documentaries. They're based on true story bullshit. And, and the producers are, are making shit up to make it more interesting. No, no, no. Documentaries fucking stink. Documentaries have always stunk. Documentaries should continue to stink again in the future in order to get back to what they're actually about. To get back to the true heart of documentaries. It is, look at all this boring shit happened. That happened. That's what a documentary is. So in that vein, congratulations, Kanye West. Great documentary. My third One Minute Man thing is the fact that new sad boy sneakers are dropping. They are finally coming, just like your mom. And uh, on Tuesday, new sad boy sneakers will drop on Tuesday, February 22nd. Is that a Tuesday or am I totally guessing here? Um that's a Tuesday. Let's see here. That's a Tuesday. I fucking nailed it, Johnny Boy. February 22nd, new sad boy sneakers are dropping. Now, for a fun little th- aside here, they're going to sell out exceptionally fast again. I think they sold out in six minutes last time. We 5X our order. Okay. So it's five the five. We have five times as many we as we had last time. We also have women's sizes this time. Um but the guest, the the wait list is so long. I, I recommend going and joining the wait list uh, right now on the on the Barstool Sports Store because you'll get an email the second they're available. And uh, and they're, they're, I, mean, you're, I, I would imagine they sell out faster than six minutes this time. So they're going to be tough to get. However, I will be giving away five pairs of them for free if you buy a ticket. To a KFC radio live show. Okay. There's, there are some tickets left for Boston. There are tickets left for, uh, for um, Nashville. Nashville. And I think that's it. Um, Boston is March 18th. Nashville is April 21st. Boston is March 18th, April and uh, Nashville is April 21st. They, there are a few tickets left. Uh, both, uh, both. Uh, there's probably like 300 combined tickets between the two venues. So if you are one of 300 people to buy one of those tickets, you'll be entered in a one in 300 chance at getting the sad boy sneakers for free. I will get you. So what you're going to do is buy a ticket to an existing KFC radio live show, buy a ticket, screenshot your um, receipt, send it to sad boy contest, sad boy contest at gmail.com. Send that, send that receipt to sadboycontest at gmail.com with your shoe size, what size you would want the, the pair in, and, um, and, get, uh, and you, get, you, get, you get entered into the raffle. And, and you know what? Because there's a nice guy. Uh, you get as many entries as tickets you buy. If you get four tickets, your name gets put into the randomizer four times. If you get 100 tickets, which would be crazy. Your name gets put into the randomizer 100 times, in, thus increasing your odds at a chance to win a highly sought after pair of sad boy sneakers. They are perfect for the summer, spring, summer, despite not being sad boy season. They are a white canvas shoe that is the staple of all summer outfits. So get them. Uh, they will drop on Tuesday, but get a ticket to a KC Radio live show now in Boston or in Nashville. Um, that will run until the shoes drop on Tuesday. So if you get them, and get a ticket to a live show at any point between now and Tuesday, you'll be entered into the raffle, which will be uh, again on. I will, it'll stop Monday night. It'll stop Monday night. So go do that. We've been getting tweets nonstop. Everyone, where's my whistle pig? Where's my whistle pig? I don't know where it is. I can't tell you what state it's coming to. I can tell you, you can get it at piggybackcraftcocktail.com. 
piggybackcraftcocktail.com to get the the hard seltzers, if you will, that everyone's clamoring for. But they're not hot, sel- hot, hot seltzers. Jesus, John. Um, they're not hard seltzers. They are craft cocktails in a can. They are delicious. Finally, some whiskey representation in the can community. And I'm happy for it because I've been a whiskey guy my whole life. I've been a whistle pig guy my whole life. And thankfully, as you'd expect, they broke the mold with the whiskey ginger cocktails. They got the ginger lime. They got a uh, blackberry lemon fizz. They got session citrus mint. They are legitimately delicious. You could take it from me because I like alcohol, or you could take it from Kevin, who doesn't even really drink that much, and he still finds them delicious. So no matter what your tastes are, if you're a strong whiskey guy like me, if you're just looking for a little buzz like Kevin, piggybackcraftcocktail.com. Again, ginger lime, lemon fizz, session, citrus, mint. They are undeniably delicious. They are undeniably going to be the drink of 2022. That's what year it is, right? Yep, 2022. Go to cra- piggybackcraftcocktail.com right now. Get your um, get your craft cocktails. And if they are at liquor stores in your area, make sure you tweet his pictures at us because legit everyone wants to know where they are. So if you can help us spread the word, that would be super lovely. Thank you. Have a great day. Am I the asshole for going nuclear over a pen? Right off the bat, give me your answer first, yes or no. Nuclear over a pen. No. I'm going to say no, too, because pens are... When you have a, a the pen that you love, if somebody fucks it up, we, we, we have yet to know what happens here, but I'm just saying you, you can go nuclear because pen, the relationship between man and pen is... Well, now that I'm thinking about it, I'm reliving a lot of memories, and I completely disagree. You are not allowed to go nuclear over a pen. Why? What, me- what memories? Me- do I look like the kid who had fucking pens in class? No, I was a kid who borrowed, borrowed pens. Borrowed pens. And right. then, so that's I was a I mean. kid who people got mad at me because I forgot to give them their pen back. Fucking suck a dick I to was, a pen. I was, you know, I, I, one of my least favorite things, and I'm going to tell my kid to not do this. I, uh, You know, Steve Fury, uh, the the comic who rolls with Bert. Uh, Bert yeah, yeah, yeah. He yeah. was, uh, it was a story on his Instagram from his podcast the other day. He said um, when he was a kid, somebody offered him five bucks to eat something that wasn't bad. It, it really wasn't. By, by the way, I feel bad for not recognizing Steve's name, but I DM him all the time, but I just know him as Scuba Steve. Scuba Steve, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, Steve, Scuba Steve Fury, it was, um, let me find, here it is. We were in the backyard. His friend offered him five firecrackers to eat a salt and peppered piece of butter. Okay. Which is like kind of gross, but butter tastes good. Fine. Yeah. Like you know, like back in the day when we were playing that game, it was like, "Will you eat that petrified goose shit?" You know what I mean? <laughs> uh, and he did it, and he got the five firecrackers. And in my mind, that's that's good what business. Firecracker. Oh, fire! The way you're saying it, it sounds like you're saying like firecracker. No, no, no like, firecrackers. Yeah, like yeah, fireworks. Yeah, 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 right. It's right. probably some Roman candles or bottle rockets, whatever. Um, and and so I actually think that was that was good business by Steve for sure. But I guess it was in his backyard or whatever, and his dad saw it, and his dad was like. Hey, don't be the kid that people pay to eat stuff. <laughs> they don't want to be that guy. And I think that's a great, great piece of advice. Like, yeah. to, to just be the dance for me monkey, like eat this poop, eat this whatever. And it's always for like 10 bucks. It's like, oh, whatever. Like, yeah, you well, don't you know, be was that geek. really worth it? Yeah. That's, I, I just watched Nightmare Alley. Um, and the, oh, yeah, yeah. The, yeah, the geek. Right, right, right. Oh, you, you've seen it? Yes. Yeah. 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 yeah you don't want to be. I, I didn't know about geeks. geeks. I didn't know that either. Is that was. Fucked up. I, you know, I, I saw that coming a mile away, though. Right? Yes. And that's that was annoying. Yeah. Um, but man, that's a fucked up thing they used to do. Like, the, the police should have shut that yeah. shit down. <laughs> um, so, similarly, well, you don't want to be the kid who pays to eat stuff. I, you don't want to be this kid. I used to borrow pens sometimes, and I had such a bad habit of chewing on pens. I didn't have that habit. I just had that habit of putting it in my pocket afterwards. But that's that's you gave so it to me forty five minutes ago. That's fine, but like, I mean, that's that's annoying. But like, I would I wouldn't even realize that I'm doing my paper. I'm taking the notes. Class ends, and I'd be like, oh, he, he here you go. And it. it's like, yeah. I mean, I was I wasn't just like. Well, I guess it was Jason Alexander who did it. I was like, I mean, massacred this thing. <laughs> I was deep throating this thing. I was ASMR twitching it, you know? Dude, I would have people Don't be like, the kid who chews pens in school. I'd, I'd come back to class like a week later. They'd be like, do you have my pencil? Yeah, well, that's ridiculous. Like, I, lo- you. I lost your pen seven seconds I- I've after I stepped out. I lost ten other people's yeah. pens. <laughs> I had to borrow one for the next class. I was the kid who never had paper. Like, I have I, shit. I, like I would, my, my mom or whatever would buy me like a stack of loose leaf in the beginning of the year, put it in my binder, and when that ran out, 
That was it. Yeah. It could be, you know, November. It could have been May. I don't know. When that runs out, I'm the kid. Pss, pss, let me get a piece of paper. Yeah. Let me get, <laughs> let me get a slice. Dude, if I showed up with my backpack, it was a good day. <laughs> <laughs> I, I bet, were you the kid who just didn't even have folders and binders and shit? You no, just put the not a papers in there? Thing, dude. Yeah. I ran, that, I ran fucking school like Trump ran the White House. Like, yeah. just flushing stuff. <laughs> <laughs> we could also do top five. Uh, you could, you like, could at any point you could go well, into the bathroom and be like, John's got a fucking test flushed on there. <laughs> we could do top five, um, like, school binders and, and yeah. all that shit. I don't even know if you know that shit, though, because you were such a fucking renegade. I, I, I don't. I, I different cover, brands. Cover my different, books. Yeah, no. You, you barely even went to school. <laughs> all right. Anyway, let's get back into the Barely went to school at any point in my life. It's so true. <laughs> it really is. Uh, okay. Nuclear over pen. So this is stupid, but I swear to God, I'm telling the truth. I have the receipts. For context, we have plenty, plenty of... Uh, for context, we have a pretty lax work environment at my job, and I love my coworkers. I value their opinions. I have no problem with accommodating them all, them at all. I have a weird complex about hurting people's feelings, and this has bothered me way more than it yeah, should. A weird complex. Yeah, it's like uh, I have uh, empathy for people's feelings. Yeah, I also have that weird complex where I don't like to be a dickhead. Right. When I started my job around a year and a half ago, I would keep pens in my lab coat, and they would disappear constantly. I'd argue that that's what I get for leaving my pens out, but also I think it's appropriate to want to keep my pen throughout my shift, at least. I was joking with one of my coworkers and labeled one of my pens to say, eat shit pen stealer. And we laughed to find out it was our center manager who we thought it was hilarious. I've kept my pen in my scrubs since then and haven't lost it to anyone yet. But now I let my friend borrow it for her nighttime shift and she left it in a drawer to return to me when I came to work the next morning. I don't know what the punchline here is going to be. This is already like too much about yeah. your pen. Like, what do, <laughs> pen, drawers, pockets, coats, just buy, buy more pens. Uh, I was supposed to go to work the next day, but our center closed for bad weather. And uh, I was off during the weekend. One of my coworkers found my pen and scratched off the label this weekend. And I was really concerned because I didn't know she had been upset by it. So I talked to her today, and she told me that my pen was unprofessional. He puts in parentheses, truth in the way truth of the question mark and that nobody gets to have their own pens she said if she saw any of my pens she was going to take them and take their labels off i told her i didn't mind censoring or even getting rid of them if she had just told me and i don't mind really if it bothers her but she was not budging on messing up my pens now i'm pissed and in a moment of rage, I went to the bathroom and ordered 300 customized pens that say, you suck pen stealers, and we live in a society. We thought, uh, my thought is that I can give them to whoever wants them, uh, wants one, and if she takes them all, she'll have to get some damn acetone and assembly line to make a dent in this plague I'm about to infect our center with. I think I let the, my anger get the best of me. Am I the asshole for raging about my pen? And would I be the asshole for going through with my evil plan? This person sucks so much. I I completely agree. What's the worst about the whole? I do thing I do respect is the thinking the, that this is internet worthy. Yeah. And what's even crazier than that is a producer of our podcast <laughs> thinking that this was worthy for our fucking show. No, I. I didn't fully read the yeah, I would. I would fucking imagine. So, I would hope so. If you read all that and said this is good for the boys, you would be fired. Go suck on some shit on Twitch. No, I I think I I think there is a part of here that is an important part to digest. <laughs> and dissect, if you will, um, where she's definitely a lunatic for the. Uh, she's she's right. She's also a lunatic for the you know buying the three hundred pens is, is is a move. Crazy, that's a wild crazy. Move. But the other woman involved here, mm -hmm. she makes a lot of sense, and I think we should acknowledge that and tip our cap to her. Wait, so wow, what? what no one, no one owns pens. No one pen, that, pens are a no one in that thing. center. No yeah. one in this world. Yeah. You might have a pen right now, this moment, but that's not your pen. At some point, it will return to the earth, and someone else will pick it up and go, "Huh, hey, got a pen." <laughs> that's how pens, pens are work. like pennies. You yeah. know? <laughs> Leave a penny, take a penny. It's Leave just, a pen, take a pen. Pens are just around. No one owns pens. Pens can't be tamed. Spoken. Pens are wild horses. <laughs> you might currently have one in the stable, but he's gonna get out. He's gonna break. He's yeah. gonna. You, you can't gonna break that pen. Uh, <laughs> you are not wrong, but also this is spoken like a goddamn pen stealer. <laughs> you know, like there's some normal people out there who are just like, 
what are you talking about? I bought those pens, and you're just taking them from me. <laughs> that is mine. I use it. I like it. And you're just taking it. Bro, you spent $4 it. on a pack of pens. Well, that's why, and they, they that's why the couple. type of pen matters, because some are more expensive, and some are, are hard to find, and some are a perfect fit. If we're talking about just, like, a pack of Bix, well, yeah, you're a fucking asshole. Yeah, I mean, if we're talking about long. a Dr. Pilot, you know, pen smooth grip with the rubber grip thing, like... It's a different story, bro. A Mont Blanc, or even a, even a Dr. Yeah. Pilot. Fucking, let's relax. If you get a Mont Blanc, you're an asshole, too. Is that but, what it was like, ink fountain yeah, pen? Yeah, 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 fuck off. But the fucking, uh, the, the point is that anyone who gets worked up about pens is a cunt. And I fucking hate you. Anyone, all the people, you were the same people who fucking dressed up your books, your textbooks, you fucking put your paper bags on them, this is and John. you doodled, and you had your fucking folders, and you thought you were better than me, because yeah, you had pens. And guess what? Look at me now! <laughs> <laughs> this is John venting about his life as a dropout. He, he never excelled, never graduated, oh. never made it. Never oh, you do your ho- you did your homework every night. You fucking reminded teachers. Oh, of, you and your you diploma. Were, yeah. Oh, you, you actually made something worthwhile. All the money you flushed into you, that education you system. You fucking <laughs> got awards like never took a sick day because that's the thing we give to our children. <laughs> like, no yeah. absences. Congratulations. You fucking. Yo, that's you, weird. You came to school fucking sick and pukey and crying right. to learn how to write a letter <laughs> today. If you are one of those Cal Ripken Iron Man kids, that I mean, you went to school like 180 exact days. When you're. If you're in like your elementary parents, school, middle school, you are undoubtedly getting sick at least a couple times a year, yeah. and you're getting diseases and and viruses and infections, and you're gross and you're dirty. You should miss at least like ten days a year, that, minimum. That award should come with a call to CPS. Yeah, like your parents are forcing like, you like out. What the fuck is going on? Why is this like this kid never got this kid didn't get a mental health day? Do you remember this fucking kid came to school stressed out and oh, sick? I was actually <laughs> I was actually about to ask you a ridiculous question. What? I can't even pose it to you, so I'll pose it to the rest of the guys. I was about to say. Uh, do you remember like the rare time where you would push for a day off and your parents would just oh. give it to you? I, I remember, yeah, it happens all the time. Uh, I, you, you, you did it like you know it was, every Monday. It was, but it was, it was the, a the, regular thing in for my the house. regular people with parents who you know raise their kids. <laughs> uh, I, like every now and then, I'd be like, "Mom, I'm, I'm kind of sick," but she knew I wasn't, and it was more just like. I'm fed up with the bullshit, ma. I need a day off. And I don't know what about why in those moments. Maybe she saw it in my face. Maybe she heard it in my voice. But once a year, she'd be like, all right, you can stay home. And it was like the greatest thing in the world. No, we uh, we used to do that with our parents, and they never gave it to us until my mom had my little brother. So she had him my junior year of high school. Right. And we started pulling the, oh, you need a babysitter. Then, like, then we just broke my dad. And it was like, <laughs> whenever we fucking wanted to take off, we oh, could just man. take so off. Wait, it was great. You, your parents, what's the gap between you and your youngest? Uh, my older brother is. Oh, yeah. What's the back, gap between the oldest and youngest? Uh, I think 18 years. Oh, wow. Yeah. Is that a different parents or no? Nope. Same your parents ones. are crazy. <laughs> <laughs> was, that a, was that an accident or no? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so by the time. He's even... I don't think any of us were planned, necessarily. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, like, I can't even imagine if I had a kid almost two decades from now, I'd be like, you guys are raising that one. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Shay is your mother. Yeah. Keegan is your father. <laughs> that oh, is... That's, dude, that's what it was. Yeah, it was yeah. like... You don't want to go to school? Like... I don't care. I don't even know who you are. <laughs> What's your name again? I would let my kids name you. Like, <laughs> we would take them around everywhere, and like everyone yeah. just assumes we're his parents. And, right. Like, Absolutely. Yeah. Like, yeah, they look a little young. It's a very like, weird whatever. dynamic. But, yeah. yeah. I mean, 18 years is like... They're, they're playing yeah. parents with their kids oh, at 18, you know? It's like... Yeah, uh, I know a girl who... Her parents had her when she was six. They were 16. Stayed together, then had her sibling when they were 21, and are like still married and together to this day. Really? That is wild. That's a lot. To have your, to, having any kid at 21 is nuts, let alone when it's your second and your first one's five years old at that point. <laughs> you have a five year old when you're 21 and you're having another one, and then you're just like, yeah, we're, we're still happy together. 16 is insane. Could you imagine if you had a six year old right now, Jackie? Six year old. Imagine if you had. It's like Daddy just an, an clicked age. the jacket. Like, oh my God, that is nuts. Imagine if you had a daughter or a kid my age, my kid's age. I mean, it's insane. I couldn't. 
I, I, I listen to what Marino sent me a picture the other day from our time hop. It was um, Super Bowl like five years ago, and we look like fucking babies, bro. I'm going to show you this picture. I mean, we it, it's it's depressing, obviously. Is it's like, Houston? Uh, it must be. Um, I mean, look at us, dude. <laughs> right? But, so, like, that's fine. Whatever. You see pictures when you're younger. It's not, like, mind-blowing. Yeah. I was a father at that point. Look at me. <laughs> not, only was a fa- not only was a father, I had a father. I had, like, I had, a, like, a two-year-old. No, I had, like, a one-year-old with, like, another on the way. Honestly, the most surprising part of this is that you're a father with a woman. You have a weird body angle with it. You look a little, a little gay. Wait, what? <laughs> yeah, you look a little gay. Let me see that because the other day I was clicking through. Our- <laughs> yeah, it's my neck. It's my- yeah. <laughs> uh, I was like, homophobic. Like, yeah. <laughs> the other day I was deleting uh, old footage off of um, my laptop, and I stumbled across just a random video from peak quarantine. And your guys like beards and hair oh were God. just out of control. <laughs> this is this is I, when I have Ben full started. Full blown Wolverine hair. Right this now. this was the exact up. So we interviewed Ben Schwartz and he changed his name to John is a mess. Yeah, that, that's <laughs> but I'm lucky that you look like a mess because I look like any other time. I'm the fucking star of that show. That, that Wolverine hair had to go, dog. Uh, um, but yeah, I mean, I look like a kid there, and I'm like, I had a kid then. God damn. Uh, anyway. You're an asshole if you uh, are a podcast producer and give something about pens to be <laughs> to be the uh, okay. Wood is a new men's grooming line that has products for your hair, products for your beard, products for your body, and products for your shape. It's everywhere. It's it it it's all encapsulating. It smells delicious. It makes your hair look nice, makes your beard look nice, much like mine, makes your shave easier if that's what you're into, unlike me. I like hair everywhere, just for a note. Um, what is for the guy that doesn't know his best life and it just doesn't come to him? He has to go out and find it. It's get what? It's, it's, I don't have to listen. Think, think about this. Do I have to advertise fucking smelling good to you? Is that something you need? I'm not going to disrespect a listener like this. No, you don't. You don't need to know why you need soaps and shampoos. You know why? Because you stink. And guess how you fix the stink? How you fix the stink? You fix the stink with wood. They got all kinds of of, of uh, scents. They got Golden Hour, which has notes of smooth brandy and Madagascar vanilla. I don't know what that is, but I'm sure it smells good. How about this summer house? Notes of coast, coastal lavender, which is different than Midwest lavender and sea salt. How about fresh tracks? Notes of oak moss and pink pepper. Pink pepper smells delicious. Everyone knows that. It's like the pink salt Tom Brady uses. Okay, go to getwood.com to get anything you need. All your soaps, all your shampoos, all your fucking this is all your that's. And go to getwood.com or check your local CV, local CVS. They are in, I think, somewhere between 7,000 and 9,000 stores. CVS, go get in there. Getwood.com. Am I the asshole for telling my girlfriend that yes? The gym is more important to me than her and her daughter. Oh, boy. Now, this one's going to be good, right? I hope. I, don't, I, don't, I, hope. I, don't. I, 32 male, have been dating my girlfriend, 29 female, for about 18 months. She has the cutest little four-year-old daughter from a previous relationship. As our relationship has progressed, I've been spending more and more time at my girlfriend's place to the point that I've, been, I've all but moved in with them. This is mostly just because it's logistically easier for me to go to her place since she has a kid and I don't. I work from 4.30 p.m. to 2.30 a.m. I get to bed by 4 a.m. and then wake up around noon and then on most days head off to the gym, spend about two hours there total. I like to work out. It makes me feel good. It keeps me healthy. I also consider it a professional responsibility to stay in shape. I work 10-hour shifts. Uh, Working 10-hour shifts means that I don't have a ton ton of time in between shifts, but I also have more days off than most working people, blah, blah, blah. This was never a problem until I moved in with my girlfriend. Suddenly, when I wake up and try to head off to the gym, she's oh, she's all, oh, uh, it's all about you, huh? Or you only care about doing what you need to do. My daughter doesn't understand why you're leaving and why you don't want to spend time with us. The last, the last thing, uh, at, I think at last, things came to a head. When my girlfriend started objecting to my going to the gym, I told her I'll see you and your daughter for a little bit before I go off to work, and then tomorrow I'm off, and I don't have a workout schedule, so we'll be the whole day together. Uh, but I have to get my workout in today. It's a priority. She then responded, so, the gym is a priority, but me and my daughter aren't. If you want to be a part of this family, it's not all about you anymore. So what's more important to you, the gym or us? 
I responded, well, if you're going to force me to choose instead of making room for something that you know is important to me, then I guess I'll have to choose the gym. And I left. I'm sitting in my own apartment now. Things may be over. In fairness, I should note that she wasn't insisting that I never go to the gym again. She just wanted me to renegotiate my schedule. But I was unwilling because I felt as if it would get in the way of my goals. Am I the asshole? Nope. 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 Not you only get bit. one life to live. Be selfish as fuck. That is, do what makes you happy. Mm -hmm. he, I, it's called hedonism. He, hedonistic, I think, is there, there's like a philo uh, philosophical way of life that's just like, like, you know, do you do things because it's right? Do you, should you avoid things because they're wrong? Should you do things? Does your intent matter? All, you know, all the different reasons you behave. Yeah. And there's some dude, one of the big ones, he just says, do what, what you makes you do? happy. And like what, yeah. Do like, what you want to uh, do? Within reason. Like, you, you know, don't kill anybody. Don't. Yeah, like, yeah, you know, yeah. But everything, as long as it's not Well, I mean, if, that makes, if that's what makes you happy, <laughs> I don't know. You but go, just, go, just do. Go crazy for it. You, you know, the weighing out of how do I behave, it's like, do I, does that, is that going to make me happy? Yes, then do it. Dude, I, I actually, I think as long very, as you're upfront about that, I, I really he's do very really, mature. He's yeah. like, he's like, yeah, this is yeah. what I want to do. Yeah, this is what I like doing. I'm telling you that. Yep. So that's what I'm gonna do. Also, you know what's going on right here? This All, is uh, I wasn't dumb and got knocked up as a kid. I can still work out when I want. <laughs> well, that's the so, so here is the problem, um, and this is a major problem I think in relationships. It certainly was with mine, uh, and I think it's stereotypically generally the girls do this when you give more and they just take more like the only reason this is an issue is because this guy basically moved in mm -hmm. if he had his own apartment and they they would they would see each other like you know when couples don't live together it's like are we hanging out tonight are you coming to my place am i going to your place are we going out to dinner like whatever you see each other you know you start out two times a week then it goes to like three and four you know and then eventually it gets to the point where it's like you know basically i'll just like like he said pseudo move in with you but it's like i'm already giving you more we are already I'm I'm committing more to you. I'm giving you more of my life and you're now asking for that much. And I'm paying a rent for a place more. I don't need. Right, I'm, right. I'm wasting right. money and And I'm time. sure he is, you know, contributing to the household in other ways and shit. And it's like, so I'm giving you an inch, you're taking a mile. And then I give you a mile by moving in and you take a second mile by saying, you know, it's like it's like why are you not spending time with me and my daughter? It's like, well, 6 months ago before I moved in, like I never saw you on this morning and that day and this day and that day, you know? Mm -hmm. So now, once I give you that, you take that as another, like a new minimum. That, that's just now bare minimum. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. I'm gonna ask for more. I mean, that happened with me. That was one of the major problems with my divorce where it was like, every time I gave something, it was like, okay, that's now standard and now I want this. It's like, I don't like when you do the smoke shows of the day, so I stopped doing that. And then it was like, I don't like when you do these parties, so I stopped doing the parties. I don't like when you talk about this or blog about that. And I don't like this. And, and I move in. Cancel then, it, <laughs> then it was like, okay, let me move in with you. Like, that'll fix things. Then once we moved in, it was like, where's the ring? And once it was a ring, now we need to have kids. And it was always just like more, 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 more. And I'm like, you know, I'm not getting credit for any of the shit that I am doing. So this guy used to probably be able to go freely to the gym whenever, commits to her and her daughter more. And now that's going to impact, like, one of the things that's important to him as a person. Fuck that. The, that the, the mental health days we just talked about. If you're, like, I actually, I work out people get shit because they're workout people. Annoying, yeah. But, like, when you are exercising, you feel better. Mm. And then when you're used to feeling better, you feel bad when you don't exercise. Yeah. My dad's on this to an extreme extent. My dad, if my dad isn't physically working, he's exercising. That's how... So depressed that man. Is. Yeah, he's, he's got to like, keep going. He's just trying to sweat out. He's, the a, he's, he's like a shark where they just got to keep moving. Perpetual motion. Bro, right. He runs a triathlon like every day, just accidentally. Really? Jesus <laughs> like, Christ! Like, all right, I'm going for a bike ride. Like four hours later, he'll come back, just put the bike away. But like, all right, I'm gonna go I for just a went thousand laps. I'm gonna go for a kayak. <laughs> <laughs> he's a savage, man. But but that that's like the problem is is you know it's like, well okay. That, if that guy gives in and stops working out, it's going to be the next thing. Yeah. Well, okay. Now, Chris so Benoit, now, that's what he did. <laughs> What's the matter? I wish ja Jackie doesn't. You know, <laughs> Jackie doesn't understand what's uh, happening. Jackie, Didn't little Chris Benoit is a wrestler who murdered his entire family. Slaughtered like all of them. Yeah. Kids Woke up one day, killed all the kids, wife, and himself. She didn't want him going to the gym. <laughs> <laughs> imagine that. Imagine if 
Imagine if the Chris Benoit massacre was just something like similar, like simple like that. Like yeah, I told you to do the dishes, and it was just <laughs> the, like, slaughter. All you your know, food. on Sundays it's chest day. <laughs> <laughs> I would say I'm getting this workout in one way or another. <laughs> Let's do another top five soon. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah. What's like top five references? Top. I'm gonna I'm gonna sum it up as like. Top five record scratch references <laughs> where, like, when you say something, everybody in the room goes, <laughs> like, like a Chris Benoit comment will stop the room if you know what's going on, if you know the reference a hundred times out of a hundred. <laughs> like, every time it's like, whoa, or like if you just see a tweet, like, somebody replies with like a picture of Benoit, and it's like, whoa, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah ben, like sometimes it ben is like an MIA asshole. You, like, am I the asshole if, like, I, if I if this happened with my wife and somebody just tweets a picture of Chris Benoit, like, <laughs> message received, bro. <laughs> that, that, that's one that is a showstopper. <laughs> it's you know, if you use it the right way, it's really funny. <laughs> <laughs> really funny. <laughs> the uh, cunt, cunt, cunt will stop you. Yeah. Cunt, I, that, cunt. I tell you I did that this weekend or last weekend. Uh, you slaughtered your family? With spitting chiclets. No. At the, at the chiclets cup. Dude, I got hit in the ribs. and uh, You did your classic. Like, ah, you fucking cunt. I went, you fucking cunt. Yep. And then as I, as I turned, I just made eye contact with my mom. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were gonna say you did it like with the guys, like the chicklets guys on camera or something. That was the problem. You didn't pay your mother. No, I did. I was like, I was like I, on the ice I, or on the. I was on if the ring. I said uh, you fucking cunt to my mom, I think she would cry. <laughs> I think she would fucking. We'd actually tears. talked about the word cunt earlier. Uh, in Jeez, the, in I the can't week. imagine saying cunt in front of my mom. Yeah, we just we think it's funny. <sighs> Do you make like sex jokes around your? Fuck no, no. <laughs> we, we we were watching a British show. Okay. And we were just talking about yeah. how they say cunt. Right, well, that's different. Often. That's like, yeah. you know. It wasn't like, like, we, it's I, like Joe Rogan using the N word. I, I would never just say, like, cunt, like, in, except for that. I was experiencing pain. I saw red, just yelled. Um, but You the, say cunt all the time. But not in the sense of my mom. Oh, oh. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, like, outside of your mom. You I wouldn't, I wouldn't casually say cunt in a conversation with my mom. No. Okay. Um, anyway, yeah. I mean, this is, uh, this is not, this is just, like, not fair. This is one of those things where it's like, Girl, you are not being fair to your boy. Mm. That's not how relationships should go. Yeah. He's already a fucking gem for taking on a kid that's not his, basically. He's doing something. If it was like, I need to play video games for 10 hours a night, I'm still on his side because, like, I think a big problem with relationships, too, is a lot of things that guys traditionally find to be fun or entertaining or are important to them are viewed as silly by girls. And yeah. it's like, that doesn't matter. Doesn't matter if you don't like sports, you don't get video games, or you don't get guy bonding time, or whatever. Or, or remember the guy with the the figurines yeah, and all that oh, shit. Yeah. Like that is something important to his heart, and like you are just not respecting that. So fuck you. And this is this this falls under that umbrella. So uh, you're the asshole, bitch. All right, let's just bang out a few voicemails and we'll be done. Uh, I'm a people click. Okay. Guess what? Dodge, Dodge. Yeah, we're getting car company money now. Guess what? Dodge wants to do for you. They want to make you their chief donut maker. Don't Dodge makes donuts. That's what you're thinking right now. No, no, you silly Billy. It's not a, it's not a pastry. It's a donut like in a car. Okay. And guess what? This job pays you $150,000 a year. And guess what? This job gets you a free Dodge Hellcat. And guess what? You get a year of epic adventures. That's from the copy. I don't say words like that. You get a year of epic adventures with this job. And how about this? You don't even have to quit your job. This is a side gig. Side gig that pays you $150,000 a year. Pretty fucking good, if you ask me. So what you're going to do is you're going to go to dodgegarage.com. That's dodgegarage.com in order to apply. Anyone can apply. You don't have to quit your job. All you need to do, go to dodgegarage.com, sign up, tell us why you'd be great as the chief donut maker. Again, you are not making delicious fucking pastries. You are not getting up in the morning and making donuts at at Dunkin. You are doing do, do, donuts in a car. It's okay if you don't know how to do that. They will teach you everything at Radford Racing School and Roadkill Nights. Okay, it's the opportunity of a lifetime. Once again, you don't have to quit your job. So this is a side gig where you make $150,000 and get to do fun shit and go on epic adventures. Okay, dodgegarage.com. Submissions end on February 28th. Once again, dodgegarage.com. Sign up. For a hundred thousand dollar year side gig, where you do donuts and fun shit. 
what is happening over there? Can you, can you hear me? Yeah. Bro, I just pissed everywhere. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like bro, I, can you see that on my hand? Can you see the water on my hands? I just oh pissed my God. everywhere. <laughs> Dude, I... I, I just heard, oh, <laughs> no, out of nowhere. <laughs> no. I started cackling my maniacally. Bathroom. I'm like, what's my happening? My bathroom is covered in piss right now. Dude, I was fucking, <laughs> I was taking a leak. I was taking, <laughs> I was taking a leak, and I didn't put the seat up, like, back. It was kind of teetering on the edge of balanced. So, so while I'm pissing, it started to close. So I had to catch it with my right hand. But it fucking, as I turned to catch it, I fucking went like this. And I, I mean, I pissed. I just pissed everywhere. I pissed in the trash. I, I pissed in the fucking, on the side of the sink. <laughs> I pissed. I just pissed all over my hands. Didn't wash them. Um, I mean, let's be honest. Who, ha- who, who hasn't done that? <laughs> like that's, yeah, yeah. that's happened to everybody at least once. <laughs> 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 really I pissed, I pissed on a the, Zoom recording, but I, I pissed in the trash, and oh and God. here's what's in my trash too. Just just fucking using stuff <laughs> of, of, of air hits extremes. Once again, I wasn't eating on the toilet. I just <laughs> happened to be walking by the bathroom <laughs> while eating sour patch extremes on two separate occasions. <laughs> Okay, this is a little convoluted because we started the conversation like off air. Uh, so what's about to happen here is we find a quote from Kristen Bell where she is responding to criticism, I think, or something along those lines about sex scenes in her new show. We find out that in the new show, she's fucking on the stairs. And, uh, and we're not into that. Dude, imagine fucking on the stairs right now. No. Like, back, like, he's laying on the stairs, like, back on each of, like, the corners, and she's riding him. That's fucking insane. Uh, I could probably get that done. I wouldn't enjoy I mean, I, it. I, I mean, yeah, 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 I guess I could, but it's like... But, uh, but no, like, I can't fuck doggy on the ground. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. <laughs> you, you're t- you, you on your knees, her on her knees, you I can't do it? do it? Why not? Because it, it hurts your knees or hurts your back? Hurts my knees. Your knee, like rubbing. Well, like it's, I mean, right. dude. But that's what I mean. Like, if you, if you, if you just like concentrated and powered through the rug burn, you could do it. Oh, I guess the, I, I'm thinking of, I've done it. Or you're talking about like the bone in, or, the, it, or the burn? In, in, my, in the late, the most recent time I've done it, it was on hardwood. So I guess maybe, oh. with, maybe with a rug <laughs> I could get it done. I don't know. I haven't oh. done it on a rug. Hardwood. Out of the question. I don't fuck on hardwood. I feel so this bad is, for this chicks. This is not a hardwood fuck body. No. <laughs> But but think about it for chicks. Chicks are s- much more often than guys expected to be on their knees on the ground. Yeah. Whether it's whether it's blowing dudes or or getting fucked. Like you're just your kneecaps are just on the ground. I, I would That's not. crazy. I, I'd go somewhere. You I'd, do that, I would say no. Uh, yeah. I, just, <laughs> I would be like, I need a cushion. I, yeah. If I, I was, I, I swear to God, if I was blowing somebody like outside the bedroom, I'd always grab a couch cushion, like, or I'd take my shirt off and like fold a little thing up. I'm never going wrong. Bro, I just run a nunnery. God gives you a fucking cushion. <laughs> Seriously. When, when, well, you know what? It is funny that like the hardcore people like don't have like the little benches and shit. They just fucking pray on. They them. don't. Yeah. And even, and even if I was sucking dick. When a guy's standing up, I mean, that's crazy, by the way. That's another crazy thing. I don't want to stand up when I'm getting blown. It's like more work for me. It's like I want to be able to like lay down and relax. I don't mind a stand. I don't mind stand <laughs> the up. visuals. Nice there. Nice little stand up beach. But <laughs> little suck job. If I'm doing that, if I'm su- if I'm giving a suck job and some guy's standing up, <laughs> I'm for sure doing the I'm on my knees, but my butt is on like my ankles, sort of thing. I'm not doing the full straight back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, I'm doing like I'm in the pew where I'm, Say, that's I'm, what I'm, I'm saying. resting that's back That's what I was thinking of. When, yeah. people, when people pray at church and they do the knees and they're all the way up against the thing and their back is straight, I can't do that for more than like five minutes. Imagine sucking somebody's dick that way. <laughs> I'd, be, I'd be down on like my, my haunches, yeah. if you will, and you've got to like stand over me. I, I used to pray like – I'd pray that way. Well, I wouldn't actually pray, but I'd kneel that way um, during all the up-down stuff. And then post-communion, that's when I chilled. Yeah, po- like post communion, I'd, I'd kneel, back. I'd, I'd kneel, and I'd yeah, have lean. my ass. On I, I actually, once I had my back issues and shit, I sat right down. Like, I'll, I'll, oh, I'll, you <laughs> sat down? No, I mean, I, I do the kneel, but I, I sit the whole time. Like, I don't even. I used to do what you do. 
I do anytime there's kneeling now, I'm sitting while I kneel. If I was a chick and it was like about to go down, you know, like in the living room or outside the bedroom, not on a bed situation, and it, it looks like I'm just expected to be on my knees on the ground while I get fucked, I would straight up say no. <laughs> You should say, you should say no. To that. <laughs> Next time some guy tries to have sex with you in like a in like a, in like a kitchen or somewhere, it's like no. Get me some sort of padding. That's crazy. On your mm. just like on your knees like this, doing like rigorous activity. <laughs> and that's like can you even like can you like? Yeah, that's the other thing. Like you're thinking you're thinking you're Honestly, you're taking it well. It's like the fear is thick. <laughs> but but Kevin was wearing it. Let's go. But Let's I, go. Had, I had if I didn't have some pants on there and you were doing that to me, I would I would I would be crying. I would fall right over and be like ah, ah my knees. Naked knees on ground is something that you can do. You should all everyone should retire at like 24 max. <laughs> max. You guys got two more years of knee fucking and then that's it. No more knee sucking or fucking. <laughs> Everything's got to be on your back. <laughs> <laughs> tried to have sex on a couch. I tried to have sex on a mattress on the ground. And I, I need the bounce back. The bounce back's huge. Because then it's, it's, it, you do have what's, to work. What's the superhero who just like, does like the punches? Like, uh, maybe he's a video fighter? game character. You think it's Street like Fighter? E Honda. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <sighs> this that's, is like the second time in the past couple months you've done that. Yeah. <laughs> that's, how, that's how I fuck. That, I just punch more, a mattress. Yeah, I need the... Because if you, if you go with the motion, you're only doing 50% of the work. The mattress is doing the other work. When you just have a ground, it's all you. <laughs> Guess what? This is going to be half as long. It, yeah, it, Twice it, as hard, it's going to last half as long. You realize you've been swinging the bat with a donut on it for yeah, a while. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, oh, boy. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. It's, it's like all of a sudden you got... I thought that was a person. I thought that was a dinosaur. KFC, fights, big cat. You guys remember that shit? Uh, it's the chicken guy. John the mustache for you. Now, a couple bones to pick. I'm going to make this real quick. Uh, the Honda. Yes, it's a Honda. It's a turbo Honda. <laughs> but it's four cylinders, so you got me. Uh, the Snapchat. The creepy Snapchat videos. Fuck you, motherfucker. It was 5 a.m. I was working two jobs. I was collecting eggs. And that was when I would send them out, and it was dark. I sent them out to all the Barstool guys nine years ago. That was your fault for opening them up. But you sent me a message one time saying, oh, you and the roommate sit around and watch them, and she thinks they're cute and funny. So I was like, sick, send them in. Like, I, I, I got an in. Now, you guys know what happens if you leave chickens alone for 30 days? I, I'm not going to starve them. I'm trying to get in my car, and they let out this prehistoric scream as they start to fucking tear each other apart because I'm not – Feeding them, so I set up food systems, water systems, set them solid. Dude, 21 days? You're trying to get in your car one morning and you hear, cheep, 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 cheep. The one chicken that's laying eggs is going to know that you're not collecting, goes broody, lays a fucking shit ton of eggs, has a clutch. And then you've got anywhere from two to, I don't know, 14 fucking baby chicks running around. And then you don't have the heart to let the fucking roosters peck their goddamn eyeballs out and eat their intestines. So you set up a brood cage, you, doc. and then you're buying chick food, and you're buying fucking heat lamps, and your electricity bill goes up, and you do it every fucking year. Really poor timing. I do it. I do it all the time. It sucks. And then those are the ones that keep fucking laying, and then the older ones sit on them and make more chickens. All right, enough about chickens. Quick question. Story. Whatever. Started dating a bartender, my local bartender. I have to find a new fucking spot now. Besides the point, she was sober. She was in AA three years. Like, she, she still is, I hope. Um... Served drinks, met me while I was drinking every day, hanging out, having a couple beers, flirting, whatever. She's like, oh, I don't care about people drinking. It's, you know, it's, I don't, I'm the one without self-control. It's totally self-aware. It was really sick and pretty hot. And I was like, all right, cool. You want to go to dinner? And she's like, yeah, sure. So I take her out to dinner and have a couple beers at dinner. I was like, you want to go back to my place? And she's like, yeah, sure. So go back to my place. And, dude, it's California. I smoke a lot of weed. She doesn't, but I have a couple beers and, you know, whatever. We're hanging out and we go to bed and we're fucking around. And I realize halfway through she's sober. I was like, dude, I haven't had sober sex in like 15 years. Like, how? Morning sex doesn't count. You're not awake. You're not conscious. I mean, like straight up sober sex. When was the last time you guys had it? Straight <laughs> I mean, this is a thing at a certain point in your life. 
For sure. I remember that, but it's just, it's just once it's not, it's just not. It's just, I don't know. I just have sober sex all the fucking time. Like, like, I, I actually. There was a there was a time in my life where I I didn't have the time years, life, right? I probably hadn't had sober sex ever. Right. Right. Like, right. Like, right. I probably had sober sex my first time like like. And then after that, you've been drinking. in my twenties, like yeah. late mid twenties. If you're if you are in a if you're stone a, sober sex. If you're a relationship person, you have sober sex all the time. Mm. Uh, but uh, and then even once you get older, like. I don't know. Even if I if I was like when I was single, if I'm single and I'm out like going out on dates or hooking up with people, you have like I would have a couple drinks, but I'm not like hammered drunk, yeah. you know, cuz that shit ain't working. <laughs> once I, once you're old, once you got alcohol and you're a little bit older working against your dick getting hard, that's a losing battle. <laughs> <laughs> like you can't fight you can't fight a war on two fronts like that. I can either be a little bit older and I'm sober and I'll like overcome it. Or I can be young, but a little bit drunk, and I can overcome it. But once you're old and drunk, like your dick's not. Dude, I can't. I can't win that battle. Honestly, now it's a two-on-one. That's uh, you're double teaming me, and then you're gonna win that battle every time. Nowadays, I'd prefer sober sex. Absolutely, I, mean, I actually always prefer. I, I think I think drunk sex is cool if uh, the chick gets like super slutty when she's drunk. <laughs> but otherwise, otherwise, the actual feeling of it all is always better when you're sober. Well, the there's also just the like the. Uh, like sober sex, drunk sex is scary now, because you're like I didn't think it fucking happened. Yeah. yeah, and also like I've fucked people who are drunk, and I'm like, how drunk are you? Right. And I'm like we live together. <laughs> 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 like, <laughs> like uh, and I'm still like, are you? Is you, this consensual? Are, are you, you down? Sure? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Like, uh, like if I if I don't oblige, I'll probably get beaten up. <laughs> And I'm still like, I don't know, you're kind of drunk. <laughs> you ever fuck somebody who, uh, when they're drunk, becomes like an absolute freak? And it's like, it's like... Uh, Not anyone like, like, who I've had sex with sober, so I don't really know. I've had sex with drunk people who were freaks. But right, but that's what I mean. I don't you know don't if they're like... Because like, like I, I've had sex with people who are, you know, like they're freaky, and then they're drunk, and it's like, oh, you're, okay, you're really freaky. And I'm thinking to myself... Just do this all the time. <laughs> like, well, but that's I mean, that's easier said than done. That's it, just it like is, someone who's, who's but, um, very entertaining or very outgoing sure. when they're drunk. But like, that's why I, I, I just wanted to almost be like, I just want to let you know, you can always do this if you want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If, if you have uh, some nerves or whatever, embarrassment, whatever, that you need to get over in order to be able to, like, you know, show me your asshole or something, fine. <laughs> but don't think that this that's like a two-way street. I, you could, this could be Stone Sober, Tuesday, 2 p.m., you can do this. Like, <laughs> oh, I disagree with that. There are times where I don't want to be having slutty sex. There are times where it's fucking. There's, there's times where you would ra- you would you'll be down to have sex, but you don't want it to be like absolutely. To me, it's all or nothing. No, I'd rather no. like like if we're gonna fu- if we're gonna do this whole thing, where I'm gonna take my clothes off, my ha- my knees are gonna be on the floor and shit. <laughs> we're gonna do all of that. Then I better be seeing and doing and getting everything I want. Oh. If, we're, if we're gonna do this dance. Then I want it. If you don't want to do it, like, I can understand being like, I want to just, like, get drunk or I just want to eat a big fat meal or I just want to, like, lay here and watch TV and not have to put on a show. But if we're going to do the show, we're doing the show. Bro, there are plenty of times I'm like, just use me like a real doll. I don't fucking care. Yeah, well, no, that I can get that, too. That's fine, <laughs> yeah. too. You don't want a quickie or you want to just hop on top and ride me like it's a fucking, you know, a, a doll. Yeah. But <laughs> I, I'm a I'm a fucking out of battery Sibian. Go nuts. Yeah. Yes, 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 exactly. How <laughs> you like that one? <laughs> Are there any normal girls who have a Sibian? No. <laughs> do you think there's? Do you think that there's? Are there, a, are there any normal guys who have full blown sex robots? Prob- I probably no, no, because inherently, if you have a full blown sex robot, but you're not. I normal. think that girls can get away with that more than guys, though. Yeah, but it's a like, Sibian, if, if, like, I, if I found out that a girl has a Sibian, I would. I'm not. I'm not gonna be like you're a creep, like the way I would be about a guy. I'm gonna massage this real quick. They don't have Sibians because they give up a closet space. <laughs> I, I, yo, I'll tell you this right. That's now. where my shoes go. The, the, I, I would say this. There's three reasons why girls don't have Sibians. One, societal shame. Two, cost. Three, space. And number two and three are more the reason than number one. I I I I think that girls have. I mean the. I, the size is what size and cost is what makes the Sibian absurd, because the, all all the other fucking things that girls have are over the top and ridiculous equipment and fucking electronics and shit. 
You know what I mean? It's just yeah. that this thing is a big pommel horse that you're hopping on top of. <laughs> that, the, the, the Sibian is like a goddamn electric, uh, a mechanical bull. Yeah, you can't have a Sibian until you have a basement. Yeah, you need like a sex <laughs> yeah. room. Yeah. They should make Sibians that do like the, the spin, like the mechanical bull. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but I, I I bet you there's some like semi normal chicks out there who who do have a Sibian. That, I listen. If you're if you are a chick, and you I have a Sibian. See... Let that freak flag fly. Bro, if I, I was... showed up to some chick's apartment and we were fucking, and she like opened up a door and there was a Sibian in there, mm-hmm. I would be like, I would cry tears. I honestly don't know what I would do. I, I would like... cry tears of joy. And then I would fucking. Hop I, I'd on be that like, thing. I'm not saying. <laughs> I'd jump right on that. Like, crank it up. <laughs> uh, by the way, back to I don't even know how we got here. This the whole fucking dude's problem. Like you're continuing to feed the chickens. Like yeah, yeah I, 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 I I understand. Yes, it's a problem if you close the door and feed the chickens and then they breed and then they, they get fifty they more can, chickens. They can. It, well, I yeah, but but I'm like yeah. Well, so here's the thing. Don't feed them and don't let them breed. And then if they do, now you just let fifteen more chickens die. Yeah. Close the door. Deal with the chirping when you get when you're getting in your car for thirty seconds, and let the chickens die. <laughs> he, he, he's, Lay them on fire. Well, that was my original idea. Right. Uh, but and I could that, understand. That's a little more active. It's, it's a little. More, I, I could just you're see, an active participant in the murder. I could there. see neighbors just be like, you know, like what, what yeah. happened to your chicken that's, coop? You know, that's not a passive murder. That's a murder. That's, yeah, you are you're involved. Mur- you're murdered. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like he was like, you know, you guys are wrong, like, because then you feed them and then this happens. Like, well, then just take that step. Yeah, out. our goal was stop feeding them. Right, right? that pretend was our idea. You need to close that door, and pretend it doesn't exist. Throw a tarp over it or burn it down. Maybe, maybe put a hose in it. Oh, drown them. Yeah. Because then you, I think when you burn a shed down, a coop down, it, you know, it's going to be a big blaze. Neighbors are going to call the police or the fire department shit. You just put a hose in there <laughs> and you just drown these chickens. Well, they, it's probably too many, it's, I mean, it's a shed, it's too many holes. You have to maybe line no, it. Yeah. Line, but the, I, line I, the bottom I, I with the, some tarp. I think the death will like speed up here. If, if, it's, if it's like they have to like deal with also a few feet of water. Yeah. Yeah. If you line, line the bottom with tarp. Yeah. Plug the bottoms, plug up the windows. Next up. Back. So you guys talked last week about how much better Rowan is at battle rapping than anybody else's at anything in the office. So that got me thinking. If you had to draft Barstool content people or really anybody at Barstool for an event, but you don't know what the event is, it could be wow. battle rap, it could be cooking, it could be an athletic event, who knows? That's a great question. But you got to pick somebody first overall for an event that you have no idea what it is. So basically, who's the most versatile, right? Thanks. Yeah. That's a tough question. I mean, Roan is still at the very top of that list, I think. Roan can host. He can He can be funny. He knows sports. He, you know, like, he can do a lot of that shit. Um, also, I'm assuming, like, I think you inherently, it's a draft. You want to perform well. You want whatever the event to be to, like, have a big turnout, you know, like, all that kind of shit. Yeah. So you got to, you know what I mean? Like, there might be some versatile people, but, like, they haven't, they don't have a big, you know, following yet or whatever, you know. If you're talking about just performance, I don't know, you know. Or are we talking about like? I this is a tough question. I mean, like, I, it's almost like cheating. Like Dan would be your first overall pick, but you can't take Dan. That's an obvious answer. But no, I mean, it it, it kind of depends. Like, it, if it is, I think I think we're doing athletic because Dan plays basketball. I think I think if, if I think Dan I think Dan Dan Dan's Dan number one, pick? Number one pick. Yeah, I think I would probably go with Brianna. You take you taking chicken fry? Yeah, she's got those talks. L- I, guess, I mean, I guess it depends. I, I'm thinking it's like well, a triathlon. It's got everything. Brianna's a good pick. Yeah, like I, I, I feel like Brianna can do it all. She's an athlete. She she hasn't done anything athletic yet, but she when we were doing Barcelona Survivor, and she like the physical challenges were like eating shit. She was like, I, I was hoping the physical challenges were going to be like, you know, more like MTV challenge shit, where it was like an obstacle course or something like that. She was like, I would massacre these people. Really? Yeah, I think she was a track runner in... in, in uh... That brings a bell now that you say so that. So, like, I think she does a solo podcast, so she knows how to, like, do that. I think that's impressive. Where's the writing? I, I That was going to be kind of like the one... That Achilles was, that was kind of... I'm sure Ron can write, but, but, but I bet she can. I, I bet, I bet they both can, but I don't have the, I don't have don't the have proof the of it. I think, but I mean, she can do, she, she does like shit with famous people. She does solo stuff. She can do athletic stuff. She has the biggest crowd 
like the most diehard fans. Yeah. She does merch. She does. Uh, she's young. Has the girl uh, demo. Yeah, I mean, it's a great pick. Yeah. When when I do these hypothetical Barstool drafts in my head, I, I, she's always like one of my top picks because it's like the, I'm just gonna go take the next Alex Cooper before I do anything. <laughs> like I wouldn't I wouldn't even be able to do anything with it. It's not like I'd be like, oh, we're gonna have a show. I'd just be like, over there, you know. I'll draft John. We'll go do our thing. But like, and by the way, you just go be Alex Cooper. You're a KFC radio listener, obviously. You're 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 listening to all this podcast. All these jokes we're making, and you're thinking, when are they going to get to the financial advice aspect of the podcast? Well, guess what? That's what time we're at right now. We are at time for me to help you save for your retirement. You're thinking, you're thinking, you're thinking, how am I gonna, how am I gonna do stuff when I get older, when I don't have a job anymore? Well, if you if you go to Masterworks, you can have all the money, all the money in the world. That's that's what you can get at Masterworks. Shockingly enough, stocks aren't the only thing that goes up over time. Turns out art can too. Little fun fact. Listen to this. Last May, a Picasso painting, Picasso died in 1970 something, people forget. Uh, Trent forgets. People, last May, a Picasso painting sold for $103 million. $103 million, which is more than the which is more than a 14,000 percent increase from when it was originally auctioned in 1997. So if you could invest in paintings like that without spending millions, that's a pretty good way to make money. Okay. You invest in art. Now you can do that with masterworks. It's a billion-dollar tech company that analyzes tons of data to find great paintings, makes it investable on their platform, and it's a pretty genius idea, if you ask me. It's a no-brainer. In fact, early investors got a new IRR of 30% plus in 2020. These are terms that I completely understand. And 2021 from the sale of two paintings. That's that's a net IRR of 30% plus. That's unheard of by me specifically. Okay, Masterworks is doing unbelievable stuff. Like I said, 30% plus IRRs. <laughs> you're not going to find that anywhere else, but Masterworks. Okay. Log on to Master. I'm sorry. You're going to find that anywhere else, but Masterworks. Masterclass. I've been saying Masterclass this whole time, I think. Well, um, turns out it's Masterworks. We're going to say Masterworks. Go to Masterworks in order to do all this stuff. Go to masterworks.art slash Kevin, my name, to join over 300,000 users. That's masterworks.art slash Kevin. The person reading this ad to you. Uh, see important disclosures at masterworks.io slash disclaimer. So I always wonder what a comedian does so much on the road. Like I've seen Louis C.K. where he talks about, he talks about just jerking off and eating chicken wings all day. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. And, and, yeah, and apparently with an audience. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe the audience didn't want to be there. Maybe the audience wanted to be there. I don't know. It's up to him. Whatever. <laughs> I didn't even think about that. Sure, You're sure, right. sure. <laughs> you brought it up. Not me. <laughs> We're at 94,000 subscribers on KFC Radio, the YouTube channel. I need to have it hit six figures. I need 100,000 for 2022. Let's make it happen. When we hit 100K, we'll give you all sorts of content. We're going to deliver on everything we've been promising. So please just subscribe. All you got to do is log in with your Gmail, click subscribe. Whether or not you actually even use YouTube doesn't fucking matter. All it does is help us. So take your Gmail, log in, click subscribe, and help us out.